Instead, we have the opportunity to make a habit of empathy, to recognize ourselves and each other. We're here in San Francisco at the Roxy Theater, and the movie that's playing is Happy Tonight. And I interviewed the director, Rocco, and asked him about how empathy relates to happiness. So this is a little bit of what he had to say. I met a woman a few years ago who was making a film about evil. And I thought, oh my God, I'm seriously, like every day she goes to sleep after spending the whole day thinking about evil. And I think, my God, isn't the New York Times doing a good enough job, you know, showing evil around the world? And I don't mean that against the New York Times, I just mean there's a lot of bad things going on. And, uh, and I hope that this is a drop in the bucket towards uh, showing that that's not the only world that we live in. We live in a world that is compassionate. The core of human nature, I think, is based on empathy and compassion. Uh, it's extremely rare to find somebody who does not empathize in some way or form naturally. I think the Dalai Lama said it best. It's not a religious thing. It's not a political idea. This is what this is the way we're born. Um, this is from this is in our blood. So what's going on here, Rocco? Edwin, so this is the first time we're showing uh, Happy in a normal theatrical release. Uh, here at the Roxy Theater in San Francisco. And uh, you know, you asked me a question inside about compassion and empathy. Uh, I spent five years, the last five years of my life, uh, studying happiness. I've been looking into what are the true causes of happiness. And I'm no expert, but I talk to the experts. And from that experience, I learned some things that I didn't know. And one of the most interesting and relevant um, applications that I, that I learned is that people who, uh, who live their lives in a way that is compassionate, that is empathic, um, that, that where people feel connected to other people, where they want to make the world a better place. Um, those people, whether they succeed at making the world a better place or not, is not the point. But the fact that they have the desire, the, the, the feeling of interconnectedness with people, that is, what, that is one of the, cores, uh, the core ingredients to a happy life. And that's really interesting because I thought that a happy life would require a certain number of variables that come together, like a job that really inspires you or uh, somebody that you love that you're able to share your life with. Um, and that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, of course, those things help. But one of the really key ingredients to a happy life is uh, living in a way that uh, reflects your own sense of compassion and empathy. There's a scene in my film, uh, it's, it's actually the opening scene in the film, that, um, that really moved me. Uh, it was an experience I had in Calcutta, India. Now, we were in a slum where people don't make any money. Maybe they make 20 cents a day if they're lucky. And they live in huts made of plastic bags and bamboo sticks. So they, they have nothing to speak of materially. But I was there with a happiness researcher and he was, we were meeting people over and over who were exactly as happy as the average American. Now that doesn't make any sense. Here people have running sewage in front of their houses. They have no uh, power. They have no say in their society. They're truly marginalized. Uh, they, don't, they don't even own houses. They have no electricity, no heat, no running water, none of that. And yet many of them are as happy as the average American and you wonder why. And what they had in the place of material wealth and comfort and prosperity. What they had in that place was community. They had each other. And of this group of 250 people who lived in this slum, all of them knew each other. All of their kids were raised communally. If, if you see a kid fall down and scrape his knee, it doesn't matter if that's your son or your daughter or somebody else's, you're gonna help them out. They live that way. They, they live like one big family. And that to me explains uh, probably the most fundamental element of that, of that place that enables people there to be happy despite the fact that they live with such material hardship. It's really easy to start pointing the finger and say, well, George Bush did this, or Obama did or didn't do that, or you know, the Iraqi people, or whatever. It's easy to blame the Muslims do this, or the Christian right does that. But in fact, I think the, real, the only thing we really do have the power to do, and the only thing that really will have an impact, is to start with yourself and be that person express those values that you believe in to the core and find a way to live your life with complete integrity to those values and that's hard you know it's like uh, I think that um, we should not damage the environment 
yet I have a car. You know, I, I just flew up here from Los Angeles. So it's not that it's easy. It doesn't mean once you know that you need to, you know, work on yourself, it doesn't mean that's easy. But it means that that's a place that you can make an impact. That's a place that's a sure thing. Whereas, you know, changing what my, how my neighbor behaves, I can try, but it, it could be banging my head against the wall. But if I can live with integrity to the beliefs that I hold dearest, compassion, empathy, uh, wanting to help people, um, not wanting to, to do anything uh, you know, damaging to the earth or to each other. If I, can live, if I can try to live with integrity to those values, I think I'm doing the best I can. How are you doing on that? Uh... I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. I'm not doing as well as I, as I want to be, but I think that's good. I still have something to aspire to. I'm definitely not perfect. Uh, actually, I don't think anybody is. But uh, the aspiration towards something better, I think, is a good and healthy thing. I don't think somebody can be truly happy without having a sense of compassion and connectedness with others around him. I think you can be fleetingly, you can, you can experience pleasure. But if you do it at the expense of others, at some point, it's not a sustainable system. And I think the truly sustainable uh, happiness, and, and again, uh, I want to make one thing clear. I don't feel that happiness is a goal that you should try and achieve and then stay there forever. I think that's sort of not the point. The point is to be able to get into a happy state frequently enough and to make your life an enjoyable thing, something where you feel is rewarding and you want to experience it. I think that you cannot be happy without having a strong sense of, sense of empathy. Um, I think the two are intertwined. And, um, and sometimes empathy can be a byproduct of being happy. You know, if you're, if happy people tend to help more. Studies have shown happy people happy people will pick up somebody's books that they see you know that the person's dropped or help help an old lady across the street happy people do that more often than unhappy people sometimes empathy can be uh, the byproduct of happiness and sometimes happiness can be the byproduct of empathy look uh, empathy compassion living by the golden rule uh, all of those things are so critical not only to your own personal happiness but really to the sustainability of our societies and our and the human race so uh, empathy I think is one of the, the core uh, ingredients not only of a happy life but of a happy world. See the world through other people's eyes. Now, empathy is a quality of character that can change the world.